Hello everyone. Welcome to session on triangles part 1. In this session we will learn about types of triangles and the properties of triangles. Let's start with types of triangles and we are very familiar with the different types of triangles based on the sides and angles. Let's revise them once. So the first one is an equilateral triangle. When can we say that our triangle is equilateral? We compare the angles. That is each angle of a triangle is equal to 60 degrees. In other words, we can say that all the three sides measure the same. And the second one is a right angle the triangle. A right angle triangle is a triangle in which if one angle is 90 degrees, any one angle, then we say that the triangle is a right angle triangle. And the third one is obtuse angle to triangle. If any one angle of a triangle measures greater than 90, then we say that it is an obtuse angle to triangle. And if all the three angles of a triangle, that is each angle is less than 90 degrees, then we call that uh, triangle as an acute triangle. In other words, we can say that equilateral triangle is also a huge triangle. And based on the sides, we have scalene triangle, a triangle in which no two sides measure the same. Or we can say that no two angles measure the same. Hence, all sides and angles measure different. And we have isosceles triangle. A triangle in which two sides measure same and the angles opposite to the sides also measure the same. Now let us learn about similar figures. What are these similar figures? The figures that look similar. That means I can compare the figures that belong to the same category. That is two rectangles can be compared, two triangles can be compared or two Closed figures which look similar can be compared. But what is the difference? The difference is in their measurements. That is the sides or the lengths or the breadths measure different. But when these measurements are seen, that is exactly the same, then we say that the figures are congruent. Now what are these congruent figures? Let us take an example of a square. I have two squares, square one and square two. When can I say that these two squares are congruent? I know that each angle of a square is equal to 90 degrees. Is this property enough for us to say that the two squares are congruent? No. We need to know their sides also. If we have the length of the side as 4 centimeters and the second square also has 4 centimeters then we say that the two squares are congruent. Then what about circles? When can we say that two circles are congruent? We need to compare their radius. If the radius of two circles is the same then we say that the two circles are congruent. But what about the triangles? Triangles have different parts that is nine parts altogether, vertices, angles and sides. Do we need to use all these three? Yes, indirectly we'll be using all these three parts but every time comparing these parts is a tedious job. That is we have three vertices, three sides, three angles. Nine parts, comparing nine parts is a difficult job for us. So in mathematics we have simple method which helps us to understand and prove that the two triangles are congruent. So now let's just try to learn how to represent congruent parts or how to compare the sides, angles and vertices. So here angle A is to be compared with angle R, angle B to be compared with angle Q, angle C should be compared with angle P. Similarly, the sides also. So this is how we write, represent which angle corresponds to the, which angle in the entire triangle and this is how we represent that is AB is equal to QR. So the corresponding side should be taken into consideration whenever we need to prove that the two triangles are congruent. But do we need to use all these nine parts, vertices, angles and sides? No, 
not required. Let's learn the simple rules to make these two triangles congruent. So we have basically five congruency rules that is SSS. Let us proceed with SS congruency rule that is the first one. Whenever three sides of two triangles measurements are given and they are exactly the same then we say that the two triangles are congruent based on SSS congruency criteria. We need not compare the angles. Right. Now, if instead of three sides, if we have two sides and one angle is given, can we say that the two triangles are congruent? Yes. We can when the given angle is included between the sides. Then we can say that the two triangles are congruent based on SAS congruency criteria. Now, instead of two sides, I have been given two angles and one side then can I say that the two triangles are congruent? Yes, but the condition is the side must be included between the two given angles. Then we can apply ASA congruency rule and state that the two triangles are congruent. And we need not compare the other parts. And we have another criteria which is the extension of this which is called as AAS criteria. That is two angles and one side is given and the side is not included side. So it is the external side that is the other side of a triangle. So is it possible to say that the two triangles are congruent? Yes. So let us see how it forms the extension of this. Now two angles are equal in two triangles. Then I know that the third angle is also equal according to the angle sum property of the triangle. So now the given side forms the side included between the two angles. Therefore, we can say that AAS criteria is also suitable for us to say that the two triangles are congruent. Now, whenever we are comparing a right angle to triangle, so what is the rule we say? We call it as RHS congruency rule, right angle hypotenuse side rule. And we know that in right angles, triangles each one any one angle is 90 degrees and if hypotenuse is given the same and the other side let it be the vertical opposite side or um, um, adjacent side if any one of the side is given then we say that the tri two triangles become congruent based on RHS criteria now, if two sides and one angle is given, can we say that? And it is not included angle. Can we say that the two triangles are congruent? No. Because whenever we just apply this, the triangles may appear in this manner where they doesn't look similar. That is, they are not exactly the same. When one overlaps the other, we can see the difference clearly. So, these measurements are not enough to say that the two triangles are congruent. So this rule is not applicable. So we have five criteria. That is the five test for congruent triangles. That is SSS, ASA, SAS, AAS and RHS. So based on these congruency tests, we can solve these sums based on the given in our textbook exercises. Now let's know what are the properties of triangles. And the first property is the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is equal to 180. And we have been using this uh, property in our previous classes. Now let's just recall the proof also. Uh, we have a triangle ABC where the internal angles are labeled as angle 1, angle 2, angle 3. And we need to construct a parallel line uh, to BC. And in such case, AB forms a transverse cell. And angle 4 and angle 1 forms the alternate angles and we know that alternate angles are equal based on the parallel lines property and uh, we have another transfer cell AC and angle 5 is equal to angle 2 based on the parallel lines property again so and we know that all these three angles sum up uh, and give a straight line and uh, based on the straight angle property I see that angle 4 plus angle 3 plus angle 5 is equal to 180 but 
based on the parallel lines property angle 4 is equal to angle 1 and angle 3 I'll take, take it the same and angle 5 is equal to angle 2. So we are left with the statement that angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 is equal to 180 degrees. And the next one we have triangle inequality property. It says that sum of any two sides of a triangle is always greater than the third side. And the angle opposite to the longest side is the largest angle and the angle opposite to the smallest side is the smallest angle. And let's see how we prove the inequality property. Here we have two triangles with the measurements given. Let us take the first triangle. According to the first triangle measurements, let's check whether the inequality is satisfied or not. 3 plus 5 is equal to 8, which is greater than 4. And 3 plus 4 equals to 7, which is greater than 5. That is a third side. And 5 plus 4 equals to 9, which is greater than 3. So the inequality property is satisfied. Therefore, the construction of a triangle with the given measurements is possible. Now, let us take another example and check whether the inequality property is satisfied or not. That is in the case of the second triangle. In the second triangle, we have 3 plus 4 equals to 7, which is less than the third side, where it is breaking the property of inequality. Therefore, if any one side is less than the sum of the other two sides, that is, we always need to check that sum of any two sides must be greater than the third side. But here it is opposite. Therefore, the triangle with such measurements is not possible for us to construct. And it appears in this manner where we are left with an open figure. And let's now learn what are medians of a triangle. A median of a triangle is a line joining the vertex and the opposite side midpoint. And this median divides the triangle into two triangles of equal areas. And the triangle can have three medians and the point of intersection of these three medians is called as the um, centroid and uh, where the centroid is uh, the center of gravity of the triangle. Right. Now, let's just recall the area of a triangle formula. We know that it is equal to half base into height. And is it the same in case of the other triangles also? Here it is, um, we can call it as an equilateral triangle. In that case, it is um, half base into height or isosceles triangle half base into height. But is it the same in the case of a right angle triangle? In the right angle triangle, this forms the base and this forms the this forms the height and this forms the base. And in the case of an obtuse angle the triangle, this forms the base and the perpendicular height to be taken. Or in case if this stands as a base, we need to take this as a perpendicular height. So we need to be very careful while taking the base and height into consideration for calculating the area. Now let us learn one more property that is the exterior angle property. What is an exterior angle? When any one side of a triangle is extended, the angle formed is called as an exterior angle. So let us take it as X. Now what is the relation between the exterior angle and the interior angles of the triangle? Is there any relation? Yes. So we know that angle A plus angle B plus angle C is equal to 180 degrees. This is we have proved it. And on a straight line, the sum of angles sum up to 180 degrees. That is, let me take it as angle B plus angle X equals to 180. And I'll take this as statement 1 and statement 2. When I compare statement 1, the right hand sides are equal. So I state that LHS is also equal. So a plus B plus C is equal to B plus X. And I cancel the like terms. And what are we left with? X is equal to A plus C. That is X is the exterior angle and A plus C are the interior angles. So this is the relation between the exterior angle and the 
interior opposite angles of a triangle and always they are equal. Now, do we have any other alternate method to prove the exterior angle property of a triangle? Yes, taking the angles into consideration based on the labeling we give to a triangle. So, according to that, um, we proceed with the proof. Triangle ABC extends to BC. So, this BC is extended to D. So, this is the exterior angle point. Now, let us take angle A. B, C plus angle A, C, B plus angle C, A, B is equal to 180. This we know that it is an angle sum property of a triangle. Now, and I know that the on a straight line, this angle sum up to 180 degrees and I'll consider this as a statement one and um, Angle A, C, D, A, C, B um, plus angle A, C, D is equal to 180 degrees. And comparing uh, right hand side in both the statements, we get that LHS is also equal. So on equating that, I'll cancel the like terms. So what are we left with? We are left with angle A, C, D is equal to angle ABC plus angle BAC. So this is how we can prove with the help of the labeling we give to the triangle. That is instead of considering the interior angles with the given measurements. Thank you.